We're in, New York, <laughs> we're in New York, whatever it was, two weeks ago, and I, think, I don't know where this is going, so I'm, I'm nervous I, myself. I think I'm driving over the Brooklyn Bridge, and my guy over here, Nick, says, oh, wow, is that the bridge from Full House? <laughs> I ain't never missed my cue. What's up, guys? It's Ryan Fitterman with the Fitterman and Friends podcast. We are coming to you with another episode. I'm here with my guys, Manuel, aka Mickey Mouse. <laughs> there, the framer. Hey, we'll come up with a nickname for his <laughs> next time. <laughs> <laughs> we are jumping right into this show. Uh, last week was a big hit. <clears throat> this is our weekly podcast, weekly updates, what's going on in the Fitterman Sports Autograph world, traveling, signings, private signings, appearances. Uh, cancellations, you know, free trips for Nick to just go places for no reason. A little vacation. <clears throat> Framing. Big, 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 big announcement at the end of the episode today. We have not put it anywhere else on social media. We have not sent out an email blast yet. We have a mega announcement. Very exciting that we are going to uh, share with you guys at the end of the day, at the end of this episode. So stay tuned. Watch the full episode, see what the big announcement is. Kind of excited myself. <laughs> Derek doesn't even know. <laughs> even know. And he's on the show. Oh, like <laughs> so sorry. We're trying to we're trying to get ratings here. I like this. So last week we sent two members of our team to San Francisco. Nick and Kevin went out there to handle an appearance. After nonstop traveling, some of us wanted to be home with the families and much needed. Before they got off the plane. The appearance got canceled, which is part of the business that a lot of the folks in the social media world never get to see. They don't see the cancellations. They don't see the issues. They don't see the problems uh, we deal with behind the scenes and the fires we put out. And, but, and none of that you can do anything about. Out of our control. It's part of the world that we live in. But that being said, they're already in the plane. They're already about to land. The hotel's already paid for. So these these jokers get a free vacation in San Francisco. Yeah. To, you know, all expenses paid, sponsored by Fitterman Sports, to just screw around and do whatever you want. Yeah. So, we got a text an uh, uh, hour before we landed, and I'm usually not asleep on the planes, <clears throat> but this time I have what? You're a what? Well, I was on the plane, bro. You die on the plane. Bro, we've you had just come check on you. Sternness <laughs> <laughs> come see if you're alive. <laughs> Once, one time. Once. Anyway, one time. Anyway, so so Kevin, what are you, Kevin? About? This time r had to wake me up to tell me to check my phone. <laughs> I seen that it was canceled. So we, the appearance know, by the client. Appearance was canceled, was canceled at the event. Yeah. <clears throat> so Since like, you guys had to fly Southwest this time and didn't use the private jet. Correct. You couldn't just turn around. That's correct. Okay. So we're like, what do, you know, what do we do? And we were already planning to go to the Giants game Friday night after we dropped feet off at the uh, hotel. So we're like, look, they got a day game tomorrow. If we can't get, if we, you know, we stay, we go to the day game tomorrow. And that's what we did. So we stayed. But I mean, you guys had a full day of activity. Yeah. We went to the, we went to a bakery. They're known for their bakeries. Got some croissants. Start off the day. Our ride chair driver <laughs> was from Houston. He told us, you know, Kevin already knew about the bakeries from his friends. They told him we got to try these bakeries. Are these edible bakeries or actual legit bakeries? No, these You're are Italian. croissants and like legit. I, I was Hammond. curious. Yeah, the time, like, yeah, yeah, I'm no, like, no, where no. we're at? Like, yeah, no. it's, a, it's, a, it's ham, and, ham and cheese, chocolate almond croissant, a little cup of coffee. Okay, you know, I can go for that. Cetera. So we go to the, we stand in line for 45 minutes, get our croissants, top notch, top best I've ever had. I and saw some of the pictures. You like stood that. in line for how long? 45 minutes. Have you ever stood in line for food before? Not under the Fitterman umbrella. No. Derek. Yes. I haven't. It's saying stands in line for food. Why, where, and when? So, uh, my wife and I went to North Carolina and it's called 12 Bones, the barbecue restaurant there. So, just know that <laughs> their barbecue. A lot of barbecue spots have long. Given lines. Texas a running. 
for their or barbecue. barbecue. Have you ever waited in line for food? Where yeah. and where? Um, there's a, a taqueria in Las Vegas that has probably some of the best tacos del trompo. Uh, in, Trump? in, what did he just say? It's tacos del trompo. Trump. It's the tacos that they, it's like, looks like a top, like a, I don't know, like a spindle it's top. Yeah. And you cut it off. Yeah, and they, they just slice around. it right if off. You know, you know. Yeah. Bro, it's, Hey, if you it's, know, like, you it's like a giant ring, you know? It's like when they stop by the table when they do the no. Brazilian Yeah, but steakhouse. like Mexican style. Okay, and so you waited for tacos in Vegas how long? Maybe 30 minutes. All right, well, I've... I've and I went to a line twice. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. That was fire. Well, like, not, the wait surprise me twice anywhere. doesn't surprise me. I'm the snob of the show. It's not happening. <laughs> I'm not standing in line for fucking anything. No, we don't ever, <laughs> period. We go, to, we go to events and we create the lines. Bro, I'm not but, waiting yet. Yeah, people did no. forget you waited two hours for a red car in New York. Bro, <laughs> well, hey, can we talk about when we went to New York? When we got put in the corner of the room. Oh, that was right rare. before somebody was having a wedding that, party that in was that some, big room. That was some right? Italian yes. mafia stuff right there. Straight so out of a, one of our trips in New York. That was a fire. We pull up to this famous Italian restaurant in New York. Oh, this is fire. I don't know this story. Your time. Yeah, I don't know this. You were still in junior high. Probably. <laughs> That's the problem. But uh, uh, excuse me. It was the year that? 2019. It? Yeah, the Astros are in the World Series. We're in New York wearing Astros. Yeah, and well, we heard, throw it out. My early 30s. So we go to a short version. We go to an Italian restaurant. The line's out the door. The line oh, out. The, the waiting room is crowded. We go in. Say, hey, ma'am, how are you? We need a table for four. She laughs at me. I'm like, ma'am, what are you laughing at? She was like, we're sold out till like Wednesday and it's yep. Friday night. I'm like, okay, well, I'm not worried about Wednesday. Like we want to eat tonight. She goes, it's not going to happen. I go, okay, respectfully, you know, may I speak with the manager? So I, you know, I put some money in my hand. The manager walks up. He's got a button up shirt on. I, I slip, I slip the money in his, in the pocket of his shirt. And he goes, oh, Mr. Fitterman, we'll have a table for you shortly. So if if you've seen the movie Goodfellas, there's a scene where they they show up mm. to the to to the theater and the the waiter comes from behind with the table and puts it right in front of the stage, something similar like that. Say so, <laughs> hey, pictures to come. I have the pictures and the cake they made for us. Oh yeah. <laughs> so they had a huge room that was about to have like 200 people in the in the room, a rehearsal dinner, <laughs> rented out private area, and they're like, these people are going to be here in you know in an hour and seven minutes. I go. That's fine. We'll be gone in an hour. He goes, seriously? I said, I promise you. He goes, all right, we'll have a table ready for you shortly. Huh. They come out of the <clears throat> kitchen and roll out a round table in the middle of the banquet hall, put the table down, put the tablecloth down, all of it. bring out four chairs, and boom, we're having dinner. It's just us, literally. Like, and, we, the private we, we, bus. and we got like three waiters. For, and, and, like, right? It was, it was us three <laughs> and me. Look, and me look. That's right. We had dinner, and the, they made a table for us. They brought it out of the kitchen. This was the ultimate Italian mafia hospitality, hospitality experience. <laughs> dinner cast pictures. It was unbelievable. I, I, and I'll get those. <clears throat> New, New York and Italian food. There's multiple stories like that. I'm, I'm not sure how Italian about roast food on every single <laughs> way. <laughs> We have four fat well, hot dogs. I mean, <laughs> let, like me, let me make it. Let me make it. But I mean, that, is this a foodie show? Or it's just sell autographs. Like, like hey. what the hell? We just travel a lot, and my 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 guy always wants to see you well. So we say, I mean, I want to what? Want well, we eat well. to eat well. We always want to I mean, see good on the road. Yeah, and we're not waiting in lines anywhere ever. You no, know, I'm there. I'm not. I'm not standing in line <laughs> for thirty minutes twice for a. Freaking croissant, a trumpo <laughs> barbecue, not happening. Tacos in Vegas. I mean, going to the line twice. If there's we're so many better things to do with your time. If we're in if Vegas we're in with, with Ryan, we're going to Chef Barry's. I mean, that's yeah, yeah. that's Barry's that's, Steakhouse. That's and the and so not <laughs> waiting. We're not waiting. <laughs> Chef Barry's the man. We're eating right. a private room and yeah. just it's tours fun. of the yes. kitchen. Back to San Fran. If I mean, if, all right, if finish you, the story. not too much. Croissants. Seals, yeah, baseball game, yeah. full house, house, and the the <laughs> oh, I have a great story from that. the painted ladies. Oh, boy. sorry, Nick, I, I hate to do this to you. Right. We're in New York, <laughs> we're in New York, whatever it was, two weeks ago, and I, think, I don't know where this is going. So I'm, I'm nervous not, myself. I think I'm driving over the Brooklyn Bridge, and my guy over here, Nick, says, "Oh, wow, 
is that the bridge from Full House? <laughs> and I look at him and I'm like, he went from bro. Oh, that's the two things that ready, bro. <laughs> so this is Alcatraz and the bridge. No, but this is before he knew he was going to San Francisco. But he's like, oh wow, that's the bridge from Full House. And I'm like, we're in New York City. <laughs> House is filmed in San Francisco. <laughs> what are you? Th- no, the Brooklyn Bridge is not on Full House. <laughs> so, a little geographical lesson, you know, for Nick. The Brooklyn Bridge was not filmed in Full House. It was the Golden Gate Bridge, and what on the right, other right. side <laughs> of the United States <laughs> in San Francisco? But circling back, Wait, so did you go to the Full House house? We yeah. saw the bridge. And the painted ladies. The right bridge. The painted ladies. Is that, that what it's is, called? That's the name of the house. It's sorry to educate y'all. The house is I just saw the other day it's for sale for six point five million. That's insane. That's crazy because the home alone house just sold not too long ago too, yeah. I guess. Where's that at? Chicago. Is it? Yeah, I knew that. People cool. were saying y'all stayed down the street from uh the Christmas story house when y'all stayed we in, when y'all went to Cleveland. Ah. That's in Cleveland also. All right, child. Next talk. <laughs> real deal. Real deal. Holyfield. So, yes, the real deal Holyfield. So, we haven't worked with him in five years. And it took five years, essentially, to renegotiate a new deal for reasons beyond our control. But yesterday, it happened. And it being a vendor coming to our office and signing, signing, signing his butt off. At one right. point, I thought he was going to knock Derek out. There were some wow. items that he was confused about. Derek was just simply executing doing his job. Hey, I, like was, I, was, hey, I was literally sitting there, and, and I kid you not, Ryan, Ryan goes off and is having a conversation with this gentleman, and I'm sitting there, and you know we're just going through, passing Nick. You know We're just rocking mangoes, handing them to me, and and it kind of it kind of started slowing down. No, nobody was moving, and I and I noticed it. The bander kept kept looking like this. He kept looking over his shoulder. Well, he's he looking look- for me and his guy. Yeah, so he's looking for for you know his guy and Ryan. And I'm thinking like, man, what's you know like I do something like that. <laughs> like, I, I'm, bro, we're just sitting here just working, like knocking he, it out. He ain't said two words. So we si- he was signing belts. Yeah, so we're just getting it. And and there was an issue with the belts, and Derek thought he was going to get smacked in the face. I Something was going to happen. He was, he was, you could tell he was ticked. He, he was ticked off. And then, so then the signing stopped. He pulled us aside. He asked if the belts were a certain, indi- for a certain individual. They were not. Um, this is the short version for the air. The belts were not for the person he thought they were for. Right. But he we was, didn't know that. We didn't know what was going on. Yeah, we yeah, had no clue. They were for us and they're for sale. What's that? They're for us and they're for sale. Yeah. Anyway, short version. We haven't had a vendor in five years. Negotiated with <clears throat> quite a few people over the past five years. It finally happened. Back in action. We had him at our headquarters in Houston yesterday. Okay. I think Nick, what did we say? It was an 11-hour day from pickup. 12. 12. No, 12 hours. You. 12 hour day. Pick up, drop off, two autograph sessions. So we had an amazing dinner with a vendor yet last night um, after the second signing session. It was myself, Manuel, and Nick. Um, it was way past Derek's bedtime <laughs> or he would have been there. Um, but it, it was a good time. I mean, we learned about a vendor, the person, mm-hmm. a vendor starting to box at four years old. Yeah, and um, that's, it, it, It's crazy. And that's one of the things about this. It's we, we work with them, but being able to go afterwards and essentially hang out. Get to another person correct, and hear the stories. That takes it above just working with them. So, right. so that was good. You know, so I sat there. Ryan, Ryan said at the first initial part of the, the beginning of the signing, he had to get up and do some business or whatever. So he had me sit down and we started working. And I kid you not, Nick, how many, how many words did he say the first two hours? Three yeah, hours. We haven't started. And he told, us, and he told us, Okay. Uh, okay. So. Thing. Less so not no so not knowing anything, right? So we get up, he's taking a break, you know, he he wanted to get up. So I go to my area and was doing something. Well, he walked over and yeah, I just saw him walk over to the framing side of the building. Oh, bro. So what took place? So he started looking at uh all of our jerseys that we have uh, re- hanging for getting ready to frame. And he come across a Mike Tyson, one of our photos that we have over there that's gonna be getting mm-hmm. framed. And he literally stands there and he's just looking at it and he's like he's well, my thought was it. 
So it's him just like r- right in the corner of the ring. Mike. All Mike. The edit. Yeah, the edit yeah. photo. And he's standing in the corner of the ring by himself only. There's nothing. It's just a solid, just a, 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 a nice thinner shot, right? So you can see him. He kind of like not smirks, but like he just smiles like, and I, I'm, I didn't ask him what he was thinking, but you know something went through his mind because uh, the whole facial expression like kind of was like, like he was smiled, like happy. Well, me being curious, he had a Harlingen hat on. Harlingen's I'm like, bro, yeah. you ain't, you're not from here. Harlingen, Texas. Me just trying to literally strike a conversation. I'm like, hey, Evander, like, you know, or I said, Mr. Holyfield, what is the significance of your connection? And he's like, oh, it's set just it a- on the side, right? Yeah. Uh, yes. But it, so this was a tech, C yeah. and an H, but it almost looked like it could have been an E, like an accursive E, e- H for Evander. Because it has to be horn, See, that's so, like a known horn, horn no. most on so the So it's one of his good friends. Kids baseball team, oh, no. nice. and that's why he's wearing. I'm like, huh. out of all of everything, like that's what you're wearing here. Now, so like he started talking, and then what happens after that? Start signing again, and then he talks for how long? And this guy's like, "Hey, bro, like." <laughs> but here's the yeah. thing: is he told us at dinner, which Manuel, you want to? Go ahead. Look, go ahead. Look, he, go ahead. Well, he just said that his mama, his mom or mama, he calls told her mama. mama, right? And I, I've, I've honestly never seen a man. Have so much oh, love oh, yeah. and respect yeah. for their mom than a vendor. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, he calls her mama, and I mean, every story, every story, every lesson he's learned in life, every you know positive characteristic, every ounce of his discipline, his work ethic, everything is oh. from his mama. <clears throat> his mama, and he tells it. My mama told me this, and yeah. he's proud of. Him. Super, well, super, is, super proud. I mean, his mom, like he said, his mom, you know. He told him like he didn't meet his well, father till he was twenty one. But he right. was the youngest of seven or, or nine. 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 Okay. Nine. So he was the youngest of nine kids and his mama, yeah. as he would say, raised all of them. And and a story that you brought up the, the, the age. Well at four, his grandma told him that he was For gonna all make the siblings. Yeah. He's all of them that he was going to be the one that was going to put the name Holyfield to change the, name. To change the, the name. When they talk about Holyfield, they're yeah. gonna talk about a and, and it's crazy because as as he kept telling stories. Like there was multiple people that kept manifesting. Yep. I think his yep. trainer, I think he said at the age his seven, first, his first trainer yeah. who passed away at 16 said that he was going to become heavyweight oh. champion. Yeah, heavyweight champion. And then he told us, he, I know you brought it up briefly that um, his first fight was at four and that's when he first started fighting uh, because a kid was bullying him because he didn't know his ABCs. And they laughed at him. Yeah, and they laughed at him. So he, he got mad. Out. Yeah. And his, yeah. Mom, and, and his mom said... <laughs> You're gonna fight everybody that laughs yeah. at you. You can't do that. Yeah. So she, she whooped the the, the daylights yeah. out of him. <laughs> so tying back in the dinner to the signing. So basically, the short version of that we learned about a Vander or Mister Holyfield was when it's time to work. That's it. You're working. You don't speak. He literally said, "You don't speak. You're you're wasting your time that you're there to work." And this obviously comes from. His years of training right. and his coaches drilling in him that when you're in the gym, yeah. you're here to train, you're here to box, you're here to learn, you're not here to goof off and talk to everyone at no the gym like Nick does. You're here to train. <laughs> and and time back to that, it, he told us that um, he was overlooked multiple times. Multiple times. If it wasn't yeah. for him having a connection or he knew someone that worked at the uh, Olympic training facility... He would have never been discovered. We say because of his because of his Christianity. That's right. why you know. That's why yeah. he always praised God after right. his fights, and when he won, he would always praise God. And that's and, what God. And did. they told him. They, they said, to "Run him off." They told him, time. "You yeah. got to stop doing that. People people aren't going to like you because you do that." So his actually his first, he was an amateur, and he fought the professional, the it's state the champion, of, state guy. champion of Philly. Philadelphia. And they were trying to essentially put yep. such tough opponents that he couldn't win in front of a vendor. And he knocked him out. So where he was going to win, yeah. he knocked him but out. But all he do is self winning. <laughs> yep. But yep. Tying, going back to the signing, all he wanted to do is work and focus on work. And then if you notice it, we had a second session with him yesterday. And when we came into the his hotel room, nothing to finish our pieces, he did not say also one he was solidly word. Good. Yep. He worked. He knocked it all out. Dude, as soon as that last autograph was signed, boom, stories. How's your day? How's this? About my yeah. mama, this, I that, and his, He was on the phone. He three, was on the phone. Three hours. hours. Well, hey, well, you remember, I think he, bro, he had multiple phone calls oh, from somebody. Yeah, it was his wife. Yeah, so yeah. his wife. 
And he just literally looked at it and straight back. He yep. told us he learned from an early like age. It, when you go to work, you work, you focus, that's it. You don't talk to anybody right. until the work is done. Yep. And I thought in, I thought he came in and, you know, was having a bad day or off an early flight and it's I game time. It. Yeah. Don't we need to show these things? Oh, what are we going to show them? What did we get signed? Oh, I don't, hey, watch out there. Some of those are paint pit. They might not even be dried yet. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you have? What did we get signed, D-Rock? Oh. Those are back in stock, dual yeah, side, back in yeah. stock for the first time in five years. We got there. And, for, and this one here for What's the first time. What's in your hand? I don't think oh, no. This one here. What you have? What do you want at a time? Sorry, don't sorry. give them too so, much. Derek, what do you got? First, we had Mike Tyson sign. Our exclusive client. Our exclusive. Mike Tyson. And then as of yesterday, we added Evander Holyfield with his inscription Philippians 413 to have a dual sign to commemorate the bite fight. Iconic fight. One of the most historic sporting, sporting events of all time. So Absolutely. yes, as Manuel stated, but for the first time in five years, my guys been working very hard on this. They're back in stock. Tyson Holyfield dual sign gloves back in stock. BittermanSports.com. Only place you can get them. Yes, sir. And then Nick has something in his hand. Not now me. these now this are one's... definitely the yeah. only place you can get them or will be able to get them is Fitterman Sports. This one here is with the one. This is where it's at. Nick, these are we have the first ever sign glove real deal Holyfield. First time he's ever done it. Real deal inscription, real deal Holyfield, which is his nickname. First time he's ever inscribed it. And we have them right here, and these are available. And in also black on black and red. And red. This is Never what we got done before, Never. dude. These a real deal. Yeah. I, I kid you not. So you know, y'all had to sweet. leave to no, go. You cannot have an employee discount. So y'all left notes. I know y'all had to go finish this signing. Right. Up, right. That's the first thing that I wanted to see when I got back in the yeah. warehouse. Was to see what these gloves yeah, look like. Was, when it sure. comes to conducting business, a vendor takes everything serious. He's a perfectionist. So. Before he started signing all of the, the gloves with the inscriptions, real deal, he did a black one and a red one. As an example, he sent us a picture because we gave him, we gave him a break and we said, we'll see you later on this evening. He sent us a picture and was like, this is how they're going to be signed. Should I do cursive? Should I do print? How does the pens look? So you, you had already left for the day. Yes. I mean, after working 13 hours, but thanks for skipping out early. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> He sent us examples and was like, I've never done the real deal before. Should we do cursive? Should we do print? These are two examples. What do you think? I mean, I mean, the, the guy, the guy is incredible. It, it's yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. It was an absolute pleasure to work with them for sure. Again, five years. Since well, the well, last time. well worth the five year wait. It was worth it. <laughs> Look, two, man, two it things. It's hard. Not coincidence. Two things. One. When we go to get when we go for the second session to get the real deal Holyfield gloves, he's wearing a real deal oh, yeah. Holyfield t shirt. T shirt. I, nice. I that, that morning I wake up September fourth. I wake up to a text from Ryan of a we photo <laughs> of Ryan, Evander, and Mike Tyson. It, it, Same day nine years ago. Nine years so nine day. years ago to the day on my Facebook memories. I had an event, or I was part of an event with the largest group of heavyweight champs ever assembled. That was at the Hard Rock Cafe, who in Florida, those guys are friends of ours, uh, great people. John Cochran, love and life. He's the he's the man. He put a mega event together nine year nine years ago to the day. So my Facebook memories was pictures of um, yeah. myself, Tyson, and Holyfield, and yeah. then you know, fast forward. We we were with him again on September fourth. So yep. we're in the car coming from the airport, and his you know Holyfield's guy was like, "Man, Ryan just sent me this picture." He was like, "If I if we would have came yesterday, the flights were three or four hundred dollars more." He's like, "So I did the right thing. I booked a you know less expensive flight just to be you know just to do the right thing, basically." He's like, and, and uncoincidentally, nine years to the but, day, to the in, day one twenty four hours later. But in our first ever podcast we did with Mike Tyson, what did he say? Everything is written. That's Everything right. is meant to That's be. That's right. It's yeah. done. It's, it, it's, it's yeah. already done. So, right. I mean, it was meant to be. I mean, Mike you know? continues to not be wrong. <laughs> yeah. 100%. So, that was cool.
Yeah, that was So cool. we showed the new, essentially, bite fight, dual signed gloves back in stock. We also have, will have photos as well, so. You have dual signed photos. Oh. Um, obviously, the bite fight is one of the biggest moments in sports history, boxing history, but also the dual signed items are two of the greatest um, box boxers of all time. And before the ink even dried, my guy, Junior, in the framing department already has one shadow box, yes, so there will be a <laughs> yes, one shadow box Awesome. <laughs> Um, since it is the start of football season, um, opening game this Yo, weekend, Texans. Um, Texas play uh, away in Indianapolis. 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 So good luck, Texans. So by um, the time you're watching this, our Texans will be 1-0. That's right. Yep. They, they play Sunday. We're going to air this Monday. The Texans will be 1-0. We're going to and show us. Yeah. So we, one of the uh, new items we just got in, this is a very hot, hot item. Manuel, what do we got? All right, so last week we talked about our custom framing, the best framing in the business. So we're showcasing CJ Stroud framed jersey. Okay. You can see custom frame logo, white matting. I mean, who wouldn't who wouldn't want this on their man in their man cave? Absolutely. Uh, one of the hottest quarterbacks in the league. Derek, you want to add anything else? Man, I mean, you, young, know, your team uh, you know, yes, we are talking about the Houston Texans and you know CJ Stroud, but hey man, look at here. We can frame them all. It doesn't matter if you're if you're not a Texan fan. We'll take you know we'll take any of them. You can send in whoever you would like. Uh, like you say, uh, sway top matting with your regular matting underneath with your you know photo custom logo is is what we is what we recommend for everybody. But it, it, once again, uh, we do custom framing, so fit for whatever it is that you would like to have done. So in that segue of custom framing, we don't only do jerseys, photos. Oh. Show them some of the other cool stuff Absolutely. you have. I'm a music guy, Thank and <laughs> some of this stuff. Help me out here. These next items, they're going to showcase or fire. Okay. All right, so what we have here is we have Leonard Skinner, and this is actual record, you know, the cover with the vinyl, and then a drumstick. Uh, so a as you see, it's a, it's a small shadow box because of the drumstick at the bottom. But not only do we do jerseys, photos, we can do, uh, you know, wrestling belts, boxing belts, gloves. Fleet shoes, uh, you name it. Uh, my Nick here has uh, one here of Tim McGraw. This is going to be my guy right here. This here is Tim just going to be. This is my guy. Why is he your guy? Why is he my guy? So here, here we have Tim we'll McGraw. Finish. This is the CD <laughs> cover with just an eight by ten of you know preference. And uh, like I say, we can do it. CDs, vinyls, covers. I mean, guitars. Like you name it. It's it, it's a uh, it's a turn it's a turnkey shop. Start to finish, custom top to bottom, custom logos. You tell us how you like it, and we'll make it happen. So, Nick, we have a little time. Tell us your Tim McGraw story. Tim McGraw, I where were we at? <laughs> Minneapolis, Minneapolis, Minnesota. So we're in. We're in. Side story. We're in Minneapolis, and with Mike Tyson, Pete Rose, and Rick Flair. That's right. And so Pete Rose played baseball with Tim McGraw's dad, Tug. Tug McGraw. Tug. And Manny, like he said, <laughs> big music guy. He uh big country music guy. I, I wouldn't know because he only plays one album anytime he plays music. No oh, Joe, if you're watching this, we're big fans. Uh, I've heard <laughs> I've heard that. <laughs> I've listened to your last album more than your family. If you ever go to Dallas, you can listen to the live <laughs> album twice <laughs> here from here to there. Or if we you ever come it. to the warehouse, you can listen to it five times in one day. We are your biggest fans. We love you, bro. Much respect. <laughs> so I didn't know he was a country music guy. I thought he was a Kojo guy. Anyway. So he tells me, you know, <laughs> I really like Tim McGraw and he's having a concert. So the where we were signing at was connected to the, you know, the hockey arena that that's where Tim McGraw was performing. Which fun fact, they used to be the Houston Arrows. Yeah. yeah. The uh the Minnesota Wild. Now yeah. yeah my I didn't know that. Yeah. I found that out because of Nick. Yeah, my he's a sports guy. My yeah. Houston, my oh, Houston okay. arrows. See, oh, people good. forget there's yeah. no sports. <laughs> well, you know, I had a you know a close friend that ran yeah, the marketing team, team <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. So I was at the games. Bert, my seventh birthday party was at the. Houston. All right, now you're doing too much. <laughs> well, it's fun. <laughs> um, seventh birthday party. Wow. <laughs> so he's telling me, you know, Tim McGraw concerts at the same arena. I'm like, okay, so I drop the guys off. I go downstairs in the garage to park the car, and I see like the 
the RVs that they're, you know, they're four buses. They're, they're not touring no RVs. Not RVs, bro. <laughs> four buses. <laughs> they're two. Tim McGraw is they're no two RV. three million dollar tour buses. <laughs> they ain't no RV, dog. Oh God, I said no. RVs. <laughs> <laughs> we all going to the Tunnel <laughs> Stadium. <laughs> so hey, so plan your route for Tyson, Flair, and Rose in the stadium. So we I, see three like. They're Five like million dollar stage coaches. Right. So I tell me, I'm like, I'll do what I can. So I, I see a couple guys get off these three million dollar stage coaches. And I go over Five there. Million. Five and I go <laughs> and I go over there and I'm like, hey, do you, you know, do y'all work for Tim McGraw, et cetera? I'm like, we have Pete Rose at this sports show and he's doing a signing and he played with Tug McGraw. He'd love to meet Tim McGraw. So like, okay, well. You know, we'll we'll see what we can do. They run back inside. They give me their phone number. They go talk to Tim, whatever. I got to go help with the signing. So I go over there and I let, you know, Ryan know, like, hey, I just talked to the security guy. Networking, baby. It's all yeah, about networking about relationships. You know. So I like, was very impressed that you took that upon yourself to right. do that, by the this way. This is for my guy, you know, my Mickey Mouse guy. So I'm like, I tell Ryan, hey, this is a security guy. This is a number, blah, blah. So Ryan... Takes my well, the guy texts me. Ryan takes my phone and does what he does and has a conversation with the guy. Tim was busy, obviously had the concert in a yeah. few hours, so he's you know he's doing I don't know what sound they checks, sound checks, checks and, and stuff that. like that. But he was like, "Hey, I got a guy that'll you know bring y'all some tickets if y'all want, and how many do y'all want?" So we're like, "Okay, well, well, whatever, whatever you're willing to give us, we'll take it, and we'll gi we'll give y'all some Pete autographs, a little trade." So I run to the front, meet the guy for the tickets. Long story short, that night in Minnesota, I delivered an hour we had before. We had an hour time. before, Nick had no clue who Tim McGraw was. <laughs> <laughs> an hour later, hey. he's dancing in two. But, <laughs> I, but I, knew who, concert. I knew who Nelly was, and oh, he yeah. had a song with Nelly. Oh, I didn't gosh. even, I didn't even know he had a song when oh, I didn't know he was on that song. One Nelly. of the greatest really? country music yeah. artists of all time. Gives us tickets to his show, my and then he's like, "Oh my God, it's Nelly! He has a song with them." Is this all in him? Oh, yeah. So we yeah. we had a blast, a good time. Thank you, Mister yeah. Tim McGraw. Yeah, that was cool. So that's why you're white guys. This. All right. So another item that I just purchased is from STL Artist on Instagram. Um, her work is unbelievable. She's been a vendor at our show in the past. This is my first piece from her. I actually have two commissioned in the making. Um, this is obviously a Tyson piece. So the specialty is all vinyl records that are broken and pieced together to create the image and the likeness of the topic at hand, I guess. So in this case, it's obviously Mike Tyson. The closer you get to the piece, the more real it becomes. Oh, it's and if you get really close to it, there's like five, six, seven, eight layers in some spots. And Mike literally looks like he's gonna jump out at you and just knock your ass out. So it's uh it's 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 awesome. Yeah, place. we're always gonna showcase new pieces that we bought. I'm a big art guy. I'm redoing my office upstairs. Um again, STL artist on Instagram. Her work is unbelievable. I've commissioned her to do two more pieces, but uh, again, an, a new addition. To my collection, this is super exciting. Follow her on IG and um, have her have her make a piece of your uh, your favorite sports hero, family member, etc. They're 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 super dope, and um, I'm really excited to own one of her originals. And I'll be I'll be acquiring two more here very soon. And as a vinyl collector myself, that that mm. yeah, as, <laughs> as the vinyl guy here, <laughs> music guy, Derek <laughs> just showed you pieces of, of framing vinyl. There's artwork made of vinyl. We accidentally did a good job of tying it all together. <laughs> Only if we had a vendor sign a vinyl. We have to, <laughs> I have to make that happen next time. <laughs> uh, so we're going to talk about AJ uh, Andre Johnson showing up for his first ever public appearance after the Hall of Fame induction September 21st. The Andre Johnson signing September 21st is going to be yes, huge. Sir. It wouldn't be possible without our friend Tommy of Big Event in New York. This dude has mega events. Um, Absolutely. upper on the upper East coast that we've been a part of for probably a decade now. Yeah. Um, so Tommy always supports our shows, brings clients to our shows. So Tommy, big event, in New York. Thank you for believing in us and letting us uh, partner with you on having Andre Johnson conduct his first signing post hall of fame induction 
at our facility here in Houston, 1318 Highway 3 on September 21st. Man, you want to talk about the next one, Nashville? Yeah, so we'll Music be at Nashville. City Hall of Fame. Wow. September 27th. That's that's right. City Hall of Fame. That is my town. <laughs> Broadway that's what I, well, Hey, yeah. last time we were there, it was Broadway, just me and you. I mean, no. There's there's stories <laughs> for days of Nashville. But you and quick, Nashville. Me and Nashville. <laughs> but getting lost. In the no, but the last, the last, I, not the last time, but one of the last times we were in Nashville, we were there for Rick's uh, last match. And one of the coolest things was going out, hanging out at a bar. I don't know if we can say names of the bars. Yeah, it's Tootsie's. To Tootsie's. But which is a bar. It's Kid Rock's bar yes. on Broadway. And it's not Tootsie's, the <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, adult them. establishment. Yeah. <laughs> it's Tootsie's on Broadway, which is Kid Rock's bar <clears throat> yeah. for everyone. So we're hanging out at Tootsie's. <laughs> not the strip club. With Ric Flair, Kid Rock, Brett the Headman Hard, the Nasty Boys, they're wrestlers. And I mean, there was an actor there, something green. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> He wasn't a musician, so he doesn't know who it is. Yeah, yeah that's Green. Seth Green. Other actor. I mean, Seth Green's a huge. Yeah, I couldn't. Seth Green. Oh, man. Uh, what? It wasn't Pat Green. Green. No, it wasn't Pat Green. Oh, okay. the bridge. <laughs> Come on. So, so that was that was a pretty pretty cool <laughs> night. But anyways, Fitterman Sports back in Nashville, Franklin, oh, Tennessee, uh, September twenty seventh through the thirtieth. We'll have Mike Tyson there Saturday. Heat Rose and Ric Flair Sunday. And stay tuned for potentially more Kid Rock stories in the future. You never know. Mm, We're in that screen. Stay tuned for Manuel doing what Manuel does on Broadway. In the Music City Hall of Fame. And then when he gets lost and I try to call his phone, <laughs> but his phone's in my pocket. <laughs> so again, stay tuned for the, the first episode in August of what happened in Nashville? <laughs> and, it, and I will tell you this. There will be hot dog stories after that trip. <laughs> Stay <Guaranteed>. tuned. <laughs> oh, my. God. So what do we have next up? Salon. Oh, uh, gosh. Private signing. Ryan, you want to speak on that one? I was a little. Sure. Uh, since I don't speak enough. Well, no. This was just. Uh, this one here is. Uh, well, this is a little bit more of like your forte yeah, on this one. That these this people is. don't hear from this loud, obnoxious guy enough. Let me just talk some more. Gosh darn it. Mail in your items. <laughs> Sylvester Stallone, a.k.a. Rocky, a.k.a. the bad motherfucker from Tulsa King. Oh, yeah, that's a sweet show. You're not watching. See, that's like see. Tulsa King. Bro. I watched the whole first season nonstop on a flight to London. And I'm like, I was pissed off when it ended. Because I, I don't watch series. Neither do I. My wife and I have this debate. Oh, she loves series because she can break it up. She can stop watching it. She can go to bed at a reasonable hour. No, it's a series. You got to watch the whole thing. Binge watch. I need to know the ending. I need to binge watch it. I'm not waiting. I don't, I don't know, know how the fuck I'm talking about this. Well, after a mail and signing. <laughs> we're gonna, what, think, well, we're actually talking about Stallone. We're going to be doing a private signing oh, o you. October 1st. Uh, focus, Ryan. So, focus. Uh, Stallone private signing. The mail and information is online at FittermanSports.com. We okay. email Kevin at Fitterman Sports if you have any questions. So, Fitterman Sports is excited to be a part of the next Sylvester Stallone signing, as Derek mentioned. Um, we are the official memorabilia company for the Malins for Stallone. This is our second time to work with them. His autograph is unbelievable. It's normally like this big on items. He's a true gentleman and taking his time and making everything perfect. But yes, we have Andre Johnson, September 21st. We have the Fitterman Sports Nashville Takeover, September 27, 28, 29. And then quickly after that is the due date for the Stallone mail and items. And then we follow that up with October 5th. The baddest man on the planet. The baddest man on the planet. Four weeks before he knocks out Jake Paul. I am right. manifesting it now. My bets are in on DraftKings. I'm sorry, Jake. You're great to work with. <laughs> Mike is knocking you out. Third round. That's what I got. Mike, Mike's knocking him out. But anyways, before Mike knocks him out, on October 5th, come meet Mike Tyson at Fitterman Sports Headquarters. Yeah. Uh, tickets are on sale. Fitterman Sports. And they're selling fun. fast. They are. actually are selling very quickly. We actually did a sponsored ad, and it's going insane. 
Um, the results are going to be wild. We might have some food trucks. It's going to be a day. For yeah. sure. It's going to be fun. Buy your sure. tickets now. October 5th, Mike Tyson, baddest man on the planet, the guy who knocked out Jake Paul, October 5th, Fitterman Sports Headquarters. And if you can't make it to the signing, mail your item in. Kevin at FittermanSports.com. Yes. Quick Always melons for signings. What is the big announcement, sir? Ah. Uh. Oh, see, this is not very to the for the next this. episode. Not just, not, 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 not. See, this is what I'm doing <laughs> <been waiting laughs> <for> because <laughs> I was warned <laughs> about this. No, 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 no. Hey, hold on. No wonder Derek's been like, next topic, next hey, topic. Hey, see, you see, trying to make no, he happen. did that to me this morning. <laughs> First thing when he got here this morning, he says something, but I'm not telling you till after the podcast. So, therefore, well, we have to tell you some things on air. To just make it more authentic. Well, that's why we're going to talk like about... You can't come in and have our morning oatmeal and coffee and just spill all the beans and tell you everything that's going I'm, on. I mean, I'm excited. Um, it is a mega announcement. Huge announcement. Yeah. I'm very excited. As Derek mentioned, we do have an exciting announcement to share with you guys. I've worked many, many years to obtain this gentleman as a client of our exclusive Bitterman Sports family. And the new... Hold on, hold on. Before you go deeper into this, explain to our our viewers or fans that don't know what an exclusive client is. Once we obtain a client under our exclusive umbrella, this means they can no longer sign autographs for anyone else except us. So they are entrusting in us to represent them in the memorabilia space for a year, two years, three years, five years, ten years, a lifetime, etc., depending on the length of the agreed upon contract. So in short, this means they can't sign autographs for anyone else except us. So currently under our exclusive umbrella, we have Mike Tyson, Pete Rose, Ric Flair, Akeem Olajuwon, Clyde Drexler, Far Malone, Oscar Robertson, and the newest one is Vander Holyfield. Let's go. Oh. So five years in the making, five years since we have worked with a vendor, the real deal has joined the Fitterman Sports family. We are extremely excited for him to join our team and trust in us to represent him in the memorabilia world. And what does this mean for you guys? It is a vendor will be doing appearances around the country with Mike Tyson at the biggest and baddest shows the Chicago Sports Spectacular, the CSA show, maybe the national next year. <clears throat> It's maybe the- a Fanatics fan fest, but we have obtained a Vander Holyfield as our exclusive client. We've known a Vander for a decade. We've worked with them a handful of times um, until last week. It was our first time to work with them in five years. So we are extremely excited to announce a Vander Holyfield is a Fitterman Sports exclusive client. Huge. Let's go. It's a real deal. It sounds like the real deal. What's that? It sounds like the real deal. It like, is the real deal, <laughs> <my brother. laughs> Yes, sir. So congrats to us, my team, Avener's team. Um, it was many years in the making, but as Tyson has always told us, things are written, things are meant to be. They're you amazing. manifest them, you work on them, you never give up, and things that are meant to be, be, yeah. happen, whatever. Let's Thing go. happens for a reason. Yeah. Avener Holyfield is Fitterman Sports. Exclusive client, you heard it here first. Check out the website for future appearances, future signings, future mail-ins. FittermanSports.com. Like, subscribe on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Make sure you subscribe, like, share any events online. FittermanSports.com. That's a wrap. I don't, I, We're I, done? I don't know if you can say Twitter. Why? It's called X. You can say Twitter. It's fine. It's called X. In the comments, do y'all call it X or Twitter? Let us know. I'm Is it still Twitter? Twitter? Is it X? X. I still X. call Lakewood Church on X. the summit. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> so, I mean, what? What? What's this saying? What it feel? What am I talking about? They said I still call Lakewood Church the summit. <laughs> <laughs> We're asking the viewers if they call it Twitter or X. So I call it, still call it Twitter. Oh, that's what it's oh called. God. Yeah, you don't say that. No, that's not what summit. it's called. That's what you call. <laughs> no, I'm saying. <laughs> Guys, thank you guys for tuning in. Episode two. This is a wrap. Stay tuned. Bitterman and Friends podcast. 
Nick, Derek, Manuel, me. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for supporting us. We have a ton of upcoming signings. Bitterman Sports on all platforms. Instagram, TikTok, X, Twitter, all the other stuff the kids are a part of. BittermanSports.com. YouTube. That. YouTube. Like and subscribe. Follow us. Watch our podcast, please. We had 11 views last week. We're trying to go for 13. <laughs> that end was 10. Watch our show. <laughs> Come on. That's a wrap. Have a good day. We'll see you next Monday. Peace out. Peace out. I ain't never missed my cue. <laughs> Should you get it? <laughs> <laughs>